On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three box sets. So, ho, ho, ho! Welcome to day three of 12 Days of Christmas. This is going to be three box sets. So, without further ado, let's get started and we'll show you my favorite box sets in my collection right now. So, we'll just put these over here to uh, show the mystery. So, the first one I got up here is this uh, Back to the Future set. So, um, a little backstory on this. Um, in a past uh, STFM video, shopping slash thrifting for movies, um, I went to Goodwill and I found this Back to the Future set right here. Um, I had a pretty good day there. Um, and I found this one. Uh, it is worth a little bit of money. This was the uh, thick case version. Um, it's really shiny. I like shiny. So, um, and this is the complete trilogy. So you get all three movies in here. And um, still shiny on the sides, on the top, the other side, and then the back. And um, you just get basically like a whole lot. I'm not doing like an unboxing on this or anything. But um, you actually get over 10 hours of special features, so you get um, Michael J. Fox discusses his experience making the trilogy, outtakes, deleted scenes, audio commentaries, Q&A sessions, um, like making ofs, uh, animated anecdotes, so you just get some little trivia facts and pop-up trivia throughout the film, uh, some special effects behind the scenes, so... Um, you get a lot of bang for your buck here. I only got this, I believe, for four or five bucks. I'm not too sure. But I'll um, just slide it out of its case here. Here it is. It's like the really thick case. Um, side, back, uh, basically the same thing. And I'll actually uh, tell you the runtime. So the first movie is an hour and 56 minutes or 116 minutes. Disc two is, or part two is an hour and 48 minutes or 108 minutes, and three is uh, an hour and 58 minutes or 118 minutes. So um, you actually get this really weird case style, which um, it has like two sides, kind of like how the old like Fox and uh, old Columbia movies were, like where you had to like open two sides to get to both discs instead of just having the flipper, the flipper spindles we have now. Um, so just pop it open there and uh, first glance we have a book um, so we'll just flip through that gives you a brief synop uh, first pa first couple of pages give you a brief synopsis of each movie um, the next three pages just go over the bonus features of each one um, obviously not as much as the I believe the uh, when was it uh, the ones released back in 2009 Nine or ten, I believe. Uh, not as much. Um, of course, I've decided to keep the other uh, Back to the Future DVDs that I own right now, like the ones with the original poster art with the black background. Uh, those ones. Um, I was actually deciding against keeping them, but I decided to keep the first one only because it has the uh, Back to the Future The Ride uh, footage on there as an exclusive feature on that one DVD because this one actually doesn't have it on here. So, um bonus features. Uh, the next page after that just goes over the scenes of each movie. Uh, they they uh, they all have 20 scenes in each. And then some uh, and then the final pages just go over the production notes. So just uh, the history of back to the feature and how they made it and everything. So and then just the casting info for everything else or true block or I forgot what it's called but uh, anyways there's a first disc it's kinda like holographic and shiny and everything so uh, really cool and, and then we'll open the other side and then we've got part two and part three uh, nothing special in that compartment there but um, back to the feature the trilogy um, I, the second one, the first one I've seen for sure, that one is a good movie. The second one, I think I've seen, uh, I'm not too sure. The third one, I know for sure I have not watched yet, um, 
I still have to uh, get back to uh, watching everything. So, Back to the Future, good set for good movies. Uh, my next favorite box set is the uh, Die Hard Legacy or Die Hard Ultimate Collection. Uh, this one I actually got in the same video as this one, um, but it was actually brand new, so I got rid of my uh, original Die Hard uh, collection. It was it was like this, but uh, it was just all ratty. It was missing the booklets and everything, so I decided to get it brand new. Um, shiny, like shiny, um, top, oh, bottom here. This talks about the unimportant information, so. We'll just slide this out, big box, for big cases. So, we've got the original Die Hard here from 1988. Um, I like this movie. Uh, I like it, like, I don't know why I'm doing a lot of lip smacking, <laughs> but um, um, I actually own a ton of editions of Die Hard. Um, I like Die Hard. It's not really my favorite Christmas movie, though, as everyone says, oh, it's a Christmas movie, but um, I don't really consider... I, I mean, I kind of do consider this a Christmas movie. Like, um, it's not really my favorite. Like, I think Christmas Story is my favorite Christmas movie, but... Um, you get a lot of bang for your buck in this one, so you get, like, two discs of bonus features. So you get, like, extended scenes, uh, deleted lines and sequences, outtakes, gag reel... Um, articles, you get the full length screenplay if you put it in your computer DVD ROM. Uh, commentaries, even though I don't like commentaries, but, um, and of course, Bruce Willis was awesome, but now, not really, but, um, John McTiernan is an awesome director. I really like him. Um, he gave us classics like Die Hard, of course. Predator um, just gave us a lot of classics, and he unfortunately doesn't do anything anymore because he got up in the scandals and everything, uh, and he got sent to jail, so uh, not really uh, going into detail about that. So there is the first disc here. So now we're going to, uh, this was what the, um, the original one was missing, so uh, we just, the first pages just talk about the different, uh, just talk about production notes and everything. Um, just, Die Hard marked a reunion for the team that made the 1987 hit Predator, John McTiernan, Lawrence Gordon, and Joel Silver. Um, based on Roderick Thorpe's novel, Nothing Lasts Forever. Um, just talking about how, uh, John McTiernan found Bruce Willis through moonlighting. Um, and not, like, actual moonlighting, but, like, the show moonlighting. Um, uh, Blind Date, obviously. Um, what else? Uh, Nakatomi Plaza was uh, the Fox Plaza building. Little well known fact, or little known fact, uh, wasn't just constructed for the movie. Um, more uh, information here. Uh, surrounding the stage was a 260 degree cyclorama of West Los Angeles, which was used in the shots and top floor offices. Um, the, uh, Bruce Willis actually got um, props of actual weapons to use on set. Um, so you get, uh, like, he got a Brennan 92. Um, all the different terrorists were given, like, actual weapons that were standard issue to the FBI and Secret Service. Um, just how they created the special effects, they used miniatures. Um, and then the elevator shaft was a forced perspective miniature tunnel. Uh, 20 feet high. Um, Rickman fell about 20 feet. Um, the look on his face was actual fear as he didn't know he was actually being dropped. Uh, which was because they actually told him on the count of three they would drop him. But they only counted like one, two, and then they dropped him. Um, so that was actually fear because he, has a fear, he actually had a fear of heights. Um, so you got the cast there and the scenes. So, um, little, spending off little facts about Die Hard, you guys probably didn't know, but, um, there's disc one with the movie, of course, and disc two, but, um, Die Hard, you gotta love it, I like it.
Oh, wait, that's not the second one. There is the second one, Die Hard 2. Um, this was the, um, following these ones, these were actually kind of were supposed to be, um, five star collections, because this one was five star. But, um, Die Hard 2, um, it's probably, is probably, uh, out of the original three Die Hards, it's probably, this one's probably my least favorite. Um, I just, uh, like, uh, I don't know. Um, but, it's, it's Die Hard, like, you got you still gotta love it, but, um, it's just, uh, it was okay. Um, just, it's kind of hard to talk about it, but, it was, just didn't really care for the airport setting, uh, I don't know. Um, you still get, like, all the bonus features, that which is good. Um, they actually had a different director on board, they got Rennie Harlan to do it. You guys probably know from classics like Cliffhanger... Deep Blue Sea, um, all that good stuff. Uh, Deep Blue Sea, like, you can go, actually, that one you can go wrong with, but, because it's Samuel Jackson, but. Uh, disc 2, you get the making of, uh, villain's profile, deleted scenes, and you get all that. And, um, Rennie Harlan was actually directing the, uh, biggest flop of all time, Cutthroat, Cutthroat Island, so. Uh, there is the, uh, disc 1. And as you can see, this one is just a little booklet this time with just pictures from the movie. I was, um, I kind of wanted them to include some production notes on it, but uh, you just get pictures and you get the chapter stops. So, of which there is 28. So, not as much as the original Die Hard, which I believe had 50 chapters. And then there's disc two. Die Hard two. Uh, it's okay. Oh yes, my favorite Die Hard, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Um, the first one is second Die Hard for me. This one is my favorite Die Hard. Um, just the only thing I didn't really care for about it was Samuel Jackson. You can go wrong with him, but um, it's, it's Samuel Jackson. Like he's in like everything anyway. So Die Hard with a Vengeance, my favorite. Disc 1, commentary, you get an alternate ending, uh, which I believe um, is, I think, he he kills Jeremy Irons' character in a different way. I believe that's how it went. Um, you, get a, you get a couple TV specials, which is good. You get the making of, behind the scenes, Big Nats, so, which is a uh, really nice added bonus. That's a nick on the side. And... There's the inside. I uh, really like the discard on this too. And here's the little booklet. So again, it's just pictures from the film. And then it's 26 chapters, so two less than Die Hard 2. Um, it's just, it's just I really like this one. Like I liked where it was sat. Like uh, the subway scene is a classic, where the cop tells him to put down the phone and everything. There's disc two. That's also a classic scene where they're tied to the pole. Um, just Die Hard just has a lot of classic scenes, so it's Die Hard. You can't you can't go wrong with any of them. Actually, a good day to Die Hard, you can't go wrong with that one. Um, obviously, I've seen all three of these, and um, I've seen a good day to Die Hard, which was a really dumb. Just don't 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 watch a good day to Die Hard. It is dumb. It is not worth your time. Don't waste your time, your money, whatever. D just no, don't watch it. Um, Live for your Die Hard, I haven't seen, um, so, Die Hard, this set is actually well worth their money if you can find it anywhere. And, the last favorite box set of mine is the Lord of the Rings, the Motion Picture Trilogy, the, uh, Extended Editions, uh, which kind of has a leathery feel. Uh, so you get Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and then Return of the King, so, we'll just slide this out here, this one is, it's a cool case. Um, so they kind of look like books, so I'll just go through Fellowship the Ring first. Fellowship the Ring uh, is an awesome movie. I like this one. Um, the only Lord of the Rings movie I haven't seen is the Two Towers, or not Two Towers, Two Towers I've seen. Uh, Return of the King I haven't seen, believe it or not. Um, still trying to get around to watching it. But Fellowship the Ring, awesome movie. I've seen the uh, just the theatrical cuts. I haven't seen, I haven't watched the extended cuts. I just... I just kind of don't really care to watch them. 
they're just so long, like, like, come on guys, like, they're, they're like three and a half hours long, so, uh, unfortunately they don't have the backings, like, but, uh, like, really, like, I like, the thing I like about this is they have just beautiful art on this, like, look at that, and then, on the bags, nothing, like, it's just beautiful art, like, I can't believe it, and, like, the book style is kind of cool, too. Um, so, the film is actually spread across two discs because of the capacity of the DVDs, and there you go, and then, um, at least I still have the booklet too. So then you actually get this little branching tree thing which uh, kind of explains Disney style about the uh, appendices and the bonus features and all that, and DVD guide stuff there. So you get part one and part two of the movie. And then you get uh, the appendices parts one and two, um, and then you get kind of a map of you get kind of like half a map of Middle Earth there. So that is Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, the Two Towers, uh, very interesting movie. Um, uh, like I, I didn't really care for it. Uh, I thought it was really slow and really boring, especially for its three-hour runtime. So I, I deserve my money back, so, and just, again, beautiful artwork on these, uh, releases. And, another part of the Middle Earth map there, as you can see, this is, uh, red now, um, and the books actually feel like leathery, um, there you go, so it just talks about all the scenes, the branch thing, again, and then the back telling you about all the AB ROM stuff. And so, once again, the film is spread across two discs because of how long it is. And then you get the appendices parts three and four. There you go. Uh, sorry, because of time constraints, I can't really show you the uh, backs of any of them. But Lord of the Rings, the two towers. It's okay. Turn of the King, this is the one I haven't seen. Um, I've seen, I think, I believe, 45 minutes of it, I think. But, um, I haven't really finished it, so. Again, beautiful artwork on here. And, just open this up. This one is blue this time around. And it is just kind of back to just feeling like a regular book, so. There you go. Just, uh, forward. Scenes. Or, the scenes that tell you... Um, which one, like, scenes that tell you which ones are new and which ones are edited. And the branch thing again. And the DVD ROM guide there. And then we've got, once again, the film is spread out between two discs. So we get parts one and two of the film. And then you get the appendices, parts five and six. And, um, if you actually get The Hobbit, I believe you get, uh, the appendices, parts... 7 and 8 with Unexpected Journey, uh, 9 and 10 with Desolation of Smog, and then um, 9 and 10 with Desolation of Smog, and then 11 and 12 with Battle of the Five Armies. And then there's the map of Middle Earth there. So, that is going to do it for this um, 12 Days of Christmas Day 3 video. So, uh, thank you for watching, and be sure to stay tuned tomorrow for um, part four, or day four. Ooh, it went really out of focus. Stay tuned for part four tomorrow. Um, so, like, subscribe, and comment, and Twitter and Instagram links will be in the description down below if you want to follow on there. Uh, thanks again for watching. See you next time, and uh, happy holidays. I'm not going to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year yet, because it's uh, not that time yet. So, thanks for watching. Happy Holidays!